That's the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that was really fast. I was actually looking at the clock. I was like, I wonder how quick this is gonna be. <laughs> Did you take the vocabulary class yesterday? No. Okay, I was gonna say it's the same thing. So if you've taken it, then you might be bored, but you can still hang out. <laughs> Just wait for everybody else to join. This is happening really quickly. <laughs> yeah. And two says I win. Actually, Firkin won. He got here like right when it changed to nine o'clock. As well. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Marhaba, Samantha. <laughs> Welcome back. What does that mean? You who are in the last class? We've got some new faces too, so that's good. <laughs> I think we're full. Are we full? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we introduced ourselves in the last class. Um, some of you guys are new, but since we do the two advanced back-to-back, -back, usually it's a lot of the same people hanging out and watching. So, um, again, if you're watching, I'll let you know if there's a spot so you can jump in. Um, let's just kind of to warm up, let's go around and tell everybody something cool that we did over the last couple weeks, over holidays. Because I wasn't here, so I didn't get to hear from any of you, so it's kind of sad. So tell me something cool that you did, or what you did over the holidays, or just anything, something like that. So for me, um, I actually went to Canada, I went home for the holidays, and it was really, really snowy. <laughs> and I got sick, because I got so used to the French weather, that once there was snow, I was like, ah, and I got, I had a pretty bad cold. And also something more cool, fun than being sick was I went tobogganing. Do you guys know what tobogganing is? Nope. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture so you can see. Here's tobogganing. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh... That's a toboggan where you like sit on it like this. These kids. Okay. And you go down the, down the yeah. hill. <laughs> I tried before in Canada here. <laughs> so I felt kind of like a kid, but That's I like, still love spots. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I did over the holidays. How about you, Servet? What did you do over the holidays? Anything? Um, I think the most interesting thing is to start teaching Turkish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't stay in class yesterday because I had to get ready for today, but um, yeah, I, I learned the letter A, so that was a start. <laughs> 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 well, it's not letter A. It's I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was cool. That's really cool. So, how how many classes are you going to be teaching a week? Do you think just one? Uh, two, I think. Two. Maybe two. And do you you prepare them by yourself? Yep. Cool. Yeah, it's a really cool thing. Um, if you guys haven't heard about it, there's a language exchange group where uh, students are all we're all teaching each other our native languages, and Servet's teaching Turkish. Pretty cool, All right? Abdu, what about you? Something cool or interesting you did over the last couple weeks over holidays? Okay, and uh, I want to talk about uh, what I did uh, on holiday. I first I went to skating. So basically, like it's it's first the uh, skating when in Canada here. Yeah. And did you go outside or in ice an ice rink? No, it's outside, like river, yeah. and we're skating on the river. And it's really, you know, it's really hard. It's really like, I have can't been, like, what? Have you been skating before? No, it's first time. That's ah. why I fell down. I, I fell down like uh, ten times. You know. Yeah. I feel so bad. And, yeah. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I want to go. Yeah. Pardon? <laughs> I want to go again there, so I tried to skating very well. Yeah. What uh, What river? Uh, Red River. Okay, cool. Oh, that would be so nice. I've been um, in Ottawa, 
There's the really long river in Ottawa. I've been ice skating there. But when I was a kid, uh -huh. um, my dad used to build us an ice rink in the backyard at my house. That's really awesome. So that's a very Canadian thing, I think. <laughs> but I used to oh, I used to have an ice rink in the back uh, of my house every year, so that was pretty cool. So I can skate, but I still fall down. So. <laughs> yep. All right. Cool. Um, Barkett. Hello. Hey. Something interesting or fun you did over the holidays? Uh, sorry, madam. I think there is a problem of internet connection, so okay. your voice is not ca coming clearly. Do I sound like a robot to anybody? <laughs> yeah. I sound like a robot. Oh. Me too. Yeah. No. It sounds no. 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 It's perfect. It sounds good. It sounds good. Okay, let me try to fix it. Hold on. I'll exit everything. No, no. Is that I better? You. Yeah, you can hear me. It's okay. Yes. Okay. Um, is it okay, Barkett? Can you hear me? Okay. Let's go to Cecilia. Cecilia, something interesting or cool you did over the holidays? I joined Colingo, and today is going to be my third day that I joined uh, elderly people in the beach for gym. For what? For exercising, physical oh, okay. exercise. Oh, cool! On the beach too. Yes. Wow, that's nice. It's going to help me with my overweight. Yeah, that's nice that you can do it on the beach. That must be kind of hard because of the sand. <laughs> ah, yes, it's so it good for it more... my my cholesterol yeah. and my overweight. And do you go in the water too? And you do like water exercises? I haven't started yet, but uh, yes, we also do it in, inside the water. Okay. Cool. I go. I I live three blocks from the water, mm -hmm. and away from the water, and ten minutes walk from the beach. So I go on foot to the, till the beach. Oh, that's nice. You need to I walk. I go I go on foot and I come back on on foot. Yeah, that's nice that you can walk. So you're even getting exercise yes. going there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I I have started studying for my February exams too, so I had a short period uh, holiday. So I I became an addict to Colingo. A Colingo uh, holic, yes, right? <laughs> Along with yes. Servet. <laughs> what about you, uh, Diane, or Diane? Diane. It's Diane. Diane. Yeah, uh, not much thing happened in this week. I think uh, I just know Colingo this week. This is my first week, and then I have a lot of assignment since yes, next week is going to be my uh, examination, final exam. For what? Uh, for my I am in a college now. Oh, okay. So what are you studying at college? Uh, English education. Oh, okay, cool. So, do you have to take the TOEFL test, or you've already done that? I haven't done that. Okay. So it's just your exams are coming up. Mm -hmm. Don't get addicted to Kalingo, or you won't have any time to study. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Kalingo. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, where are you from, Tian? Or sorry, Dian? Yeah. Vietnam. Indonesia. Oh, Indonesia. Indonesia, cool. And who's your friend? <laughs> My friend. <laughs> She's shy. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right, hey Furkan. Something hey. cool you did over the holidays? Uh, actually, uh, I was story yesterday. It happened. Uh, it was snowy yesterday, and I went to the school, and <laughs> there was too many dogs because it was uh, a little bit morning maybe too much and two or f not not two ten dogs had passed me and one of them walked me and I started the running it was very scary oh my gosh you didn't get bit did you it didn't Sorry. bite you did it no okay <laughs> I survived 
I'm a little afraid of big dogs, so I probably would have been crying and running at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but good, you're okay, so that's good. <laughs> what about you, Sama? Hi. Hey. I think special uh, over the weekend, uh, just uh, watching uh, socks of the uh, sport in TV, on TV, and uh, some work at uh, in, uh, at my com the computer in my house because I have some some projects to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, nothing special, and just TV and watching TV, and uh, especially uh, the sock shop, the sock shop sport. I, I love it. Yeah, good, awesome. Okay, who's left? Paul. Uh, I've been preparing for exams. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a lot of work. I remember exams. <laughs> and it's very boring. Yeah. It can it can be. Just drink lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer tea. And get lots of sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's works. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So today, if you already took um, this level um, fifth class of, of vocabulary, this lesson's going to be the same as the one from yesterday. Um, if you already took it, so it might be a bit repetitive for you. If you have already taken it. Um, it would probably be better if you would just uh, watch from the outside so somebody who hasn't taken it can come in yet. Um, but it's a new lesson, so most of you probably haven't. So, um, vocabulary. So what we're going to do, uh, because it's an advanced class, is focus on trying to figure out the meaning of the vocabulary words based on the context. So I'm not going to tell you what the words mean if you don't know them. Not right away, anyway. <laughs> I will if you can't figure it out. But um, I'm you have to try to figure it out yourself based on the sentence and things like that. So that's kind of an advanced technique with vocabulary. So, yeah, I can't imagine being chased by 10 dogs. I would cry. <laughs> I'm a chicken. I'd be like, no, running away. Okay, so I can't give you guys this document again, but I'm just going to share my screen. So what we're going to do is look at the text and read it. All of the bold words are our vocabulary words. Once we've gone through the text, we're going to go down to the bottom and actually look at the multiple meanings of these words, okay? And if we have time, we'll do some more stuff, but that will probably take up the class. So this is kind of a mixed reading and vocabulary thing. That's probably too small, so I'm just gonna try to... Is that, is that okay? Can everybody see? Yes. Okay, so... Oops. There we go. So let's start from the left with Abdu. Do you want to read the first paragraph for us? Just read it all the way through, and then we'll go back and look at the bold words after, okay? Okay. When most people read a book, newspaper... Read. Read or read? Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to pause you right there from the last lesson. So if you're talking about reading in the present, it's read. If it's in the past, it's read. Read, read. read. So it's spelled the same way, so that can be confusing. But okay. that came up in the last lesson, too. So there you go. Go ahead. When most people read a book, newspaper, or magazine, they see the words as black markers on the page. This is not uh, surpri surprising, given that uh, link ink ink in most publications uh, is black. However, there is a group of people who do not see the words in front of them as black. Uh, and instead, they might they might say the number four is blue or the word is a gift. It's Gift is green. Colin. Colin. Yep, keep going. Others might say the the plan from. Uh, I can't see it. You can't see it? Is it too small? No, it's really. Uh, yes, no, it's really good. Is that better? Yep, no. Uh, Hatch or. Others might say. Mm, others might say uh, they the they the ban. Pain. 
The yeah. pain from from a head head. I don't know headache. this word. Headache. Headache is yeah, organ. Yeah, H makes the K sound. Headache. Headache is organ. Organ. Uh, the flow. The. F Orange. Flavor, the flavor of a uh, soldier. Soldier around or sniff of. Uh, Bouquet. Of That's not fair. That's a French word. <laughs> the sniff of a bouquet. Um, of uh, Reese's pink. What? What's? Uh, what's going on here? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So what we're talking about here is called synesthesia. So has anybody ever heard of this before? No. So yep. before we keep reading, I'm gonna give you an example so you can kind of see how this works. Servet, can you please tell me the colors of each letter? Hmm. Zero, black, one, turquoise, two... So instead of saying the numbers, just say the color. Okay, black, turquoise, blue, uh, red, green, some kind of yellow. Yep. <laughs> Uh, six, uh, maybe orange. Seven, maybe not. Uh, so like what happens blue. here is for some people, they might say like brown, turquoise, purple, red, four, five. And what happens is you get mixed up between whether or not to say the color or the number. It's something that happens in your brain. So you see one thing and then it's automatically reacting to something else. So if you see words like what they're saying in the text, is that um, some people might not see words in front of them as black. Instead, they might say that the number four is blue or that the word gift is green. Others might say that they feel color from something like a headache. So if they have a headache, they might say they kind of see orange. Or if they sniff a bouquet of roses, they might think of the color pink. So it's like associating colors with certain things or a different reaction of your brain, a reaction of your brain to things. So um, let's go and look at the specific vocabulary words. So the first one is ink. What's ink? The liquid that we use when we write, uh, we put it in pen. Yeah, so it's the liquid that you use to, to write, or when you see a newspaper, all of the words are written in ink. Good. We don't really use ink pens as often anymore, like drippy ink pens. The classic old ones with feathers. <laughs> so it's kind of old-fashioned. But still use ink in your printer and things like that. Um, and then the next one is flavor. And just to point it out, flavor is spelt with a U in Canada. It's spelt without a U in America. So that's a difference between Canadian and American spelling. We all know what the word flavor, the words flavor, sniff, and roses mean. Yep. Flavor is taste. Taste. Yeah, it's the taste. And what does sniffing mean? To sniff. Oh, like dog sniff. <laughs> Cecilia. Yeah, like smelling. Yes. What's so sniff means like his nose. Doing that, that's what sniffing. So another context where you might hear sniff is when you're talking about drugs. <laughs> People <laughs> sniff drugs, <laughs> right? Versus like smelling something, smelling the air, you're not really... But when you have a rose up to your nose, it's very kind of a specific... Speci bleh, <laughs> specifically smelling something. <laughs> Tongue twister, okay. All right, let's look at the second one. Um, Abdu, good reading. So now it's Barkett's turn. Barkett, do you want to read? I might still sound like a robot to Barkett. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll go to Cecilia. And also, if I stop you when you're reading, it's just to help you with your pronunciation. So no worries. Okay. <laughs> so Cecilia, can you see it on my screen okay? Yes. yes. Okay. According to neuro, neuroscientists, these people 
have a condition, a condition called synesthesia. The word synesthesia comes from the Greek word syn, meaning together, and ethesis, meaning perception, and means joint perception. All humans have five senses touch, vision, hearing, taste, and smell. And uh, typically, these are clearly separated from one another. However, for a person with synesthesia, the boundaries between the senses are weak. So one sense, for example, sound very steep across, across to another sense, such as sight, that as sight so that the sound of an orchestra playing might be seen as green woolly lines lines. This combination and auditory stimulation accompanied by a visual sensation is the most common type of Synesthesia. Any uh, simultaneous. simultaneous combination. Mm -hmm. uh, of two or more senses is considered a form of synesthesia. Good. So like when we were looking at the numbers and letters with Servet, sometimes you look at one thing and your brain associates it with something else. So what they were giving another example of is it's mixed perception. So if you're at the orchestra and you're watching them play instruments, you're rather than just listening to it, your brain um, switches to another sense, sight, and all of a sudden you see the music, which would actually be really cool. <laughs> so, but um, it kind of switches and your, your senses are kind of blurred together. And the, they call this synesthesia. That's like the name of um, the condition, you could call it. But I think it would actually be pretty neat to be able to see music. But I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's look at the vocabulary words. <laughs> so the first one is perception. Can anyone tell me what perception means in this, in this case? What you get through your senses. Awareness. Yeah, so what you, it's, it comes from the word perceive. So what you perceive is your perception. So what you sense, what you what you sense, joint perception. Experience through your senses. Yeah, experience through your senses. Good. Usama, did you want to say something? Yes, to be aware. Yeah, to be aware, what you're aware of, what you perceive. Good. Okay. And then, so one sense, for example, Sound may seep across to another sense, such as sight. What does seep mean? Have you heard that word before? Yep. Mm -hmm. seep, seep means like uh, a liquid, a liquid movement from. Uh, yeah. So when you think of seep, you might think of of liquids or like you have, um, say, you're straining pasta and the water is kind of seeping down or seeping through, sliding through. You think of it kind of literally like that. But when you're talking about Seeping in this case, sound may seep across. Yeah, like transition. Yeah, transition, kind of move, shift. Okay, it's kind of like transitioning into something where it's not necessarily supposed to be. That's kind of the easiest way to explain it. So when you're talking about the senses, they're saying you're listening, but all of a sudden your sight sense is going off and you're seeing green. That's not really supposed to happen. So your senses are seeping or, or melding, blending together. Okay. Um, the next one is orchestra. What's an orchestra? I know the orchestra. Perkin, what's an orchestra? A group yeah. of musicians. Yeah, music. So a big group of musicians. What does wobbly mean? Shaky. Shaky, yeah. Moving, yes. Yeah shaky so it's like the music's going and you can see it like this like green wobbly lines like that you know if you're like looking on a hospital monitor and you can see the lines like this going up and down that's wobbly shaky this is wobbly right now I'm like Ugh. 
Rocky, yeah, Rocky. Okay. Um, auditory stimulation. What does auditory mean? So if you don't know, read the sentence and see if you can figure out what it means, what you think it means. Uh, the stimulation comes from uh, comes from that the stimulation uh, that comes from audio. Maybe? Yeah, right. So you can see what, from the word the root of it is AUD, right? So that would suggest that it's a stimulation coming from audio. So something to do with hearing, right? So auditory stimulation is your sense of hearing or the stimulation in your ears. Right? So they're saying a combination of auditory simulation and visual sensation. So seeing and hearing, basically. Just a fancy way of saying hearing and seeing. <laughs> Is the common, most common type of synesthesia. It looks like this guy used drugs. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he was sniffing something. <laughs> okay. Um, next one is uh, simultaneous. S simultaneous. At the same time. Yeah, at the same time. At the same time. Parallel. Joined. Parallel. Yes, and, and, and parallel combination. Can you type it, Osama? I can't quite hear you. Uh, parallel combination. Parallel. Okay, bye, Abdu. Parallel. Pa I You're welcome. Parallel. I, I have school I tomorrow, so. Yeah, no worries. Get okay. your studying done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Later. Thank you. Parallel, parallel. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, it's parallel. It's a long A, that's why I couldn't hear it. Parallel combination, yeah. Or parallel sensation. So it's like both senses at the same time. So if if you're watching, there's an open seat, so you can come hang out with us. Doesn't simultaneous means like, uh, for example, an actor in theater? If X without any text, uh, like mm, without mm. any prepared, uh, prepared. No, that's um, that's so simultaneous is at the same time when you're acting without anything prepared. That's called um something else. I can't. <laughs> um, oh, what's it called? Let me let me Google it. I can't think of the word. One sec. It's called improv, but there's there's a word. Drums. No. Um, I, I, you can... I'll think of it, Servet, but it's not the okay. same word. It's something similar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna bug me now for the rest of the class. But no, okay. simultaneous means at the same time. What's the? I'll think of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next thing, and hopefully it will come to me. Okay. All right. Number three. It is... Deanne, do you want to read? <coughs> Neurologist Richard Sayatovic became interested in this phenomenon after he found out his neighbor tasted shapes. Sajovic was convinced he should take a deeper look when less than two weeks later he encountered a colleague who saw the sound of his hospital computer as red lighting bolts. Sajovic and other scientists believe that synesthesia is not an abnormality. Welcome. In fact, we all may experience synesthesia at birth. Only when our brain develops that the boundaries between each of our senses become more refined. People with synesthesia, on the other hand, retain these indistinct boundaries throughout their lives. Perfect. Okay. So we've got a couple of words here. Bolts, abnormality, and refined. You guys heard of a lightning bolt? Yeah, I know, but I can't tell in English. Kind of hard to describe what a lightning bolt is, right? Um, I'll put up a picture. That's a lightning bolt. <laughs> oh. 
Okay? But there's also another meaning or a couple other meanings for bolt. So in this case, they're talking about lightning bolts. To bolt can also mean to go very quickly. So you can bolt or run really quickly. So there's multiple meanings for that word, but in this case, they're talking about a lightning bolt. And then the next one is abnormality. Just looking at that word, what do you think it means? Not normal. Not normal, right? So how do you know? Because there's the ab in front of it, right? So is not an abnormality. They're saying it's not necessarily something that's really weird or abnormal. In fact, we may all experience it at birth. Can you imagine maybe when we were babies, we could see all of these like crazy green wiggly lines? <laughs> Yeah, ir irregular. Yeah, exactly. And then what does refined mean? Uh, flourished. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Servet, can you repeat that? Reflourished. To improve. Flourished, yeah. Specialized. Improved. Cecilia? Highly specialized. Yes, yeah, specialized. Good. So refined means exactly all of those things. So your re senses are refined. It means they're much stronger. They're... Um, they're, yeah, much stronger, but refined also has another meaning. Um, for example, if you're talking about sugar, refined sugar, it's like something that's broken down um, rather than a natural sugar, it's more like the big chunks. So you can also talk about refined foods versus refined senses, so they, they have different meanings. So again, there's multiple meanings for that word, refined. Um, any other vocabulary words in this paragraph that you want me to look at? Phenomenon. Phenomenon. What's a phenomenon? Cecilia? Scientists sometimes come up with phenomenon when they are uh, experimenting. Right. So a phenomenon is essentially, it's just something that happens. So um, let me look up a better definition than that. This is a teacher. It's a, it's a special happening. No? Yeah, a special happening. That's a, that's a good way to say it. So a fact or something that happens specifically, a special happening. So a lot of the time when you're talking about like ghosts, like if somebody says, oh, they saw a ghost and you see like all those ghost stories on TV, you might call that a supernatural phenomenon. Hmm. So in this case, they're talking, oops. In this case, they're talking about um, the phenomenon of synesthesia. So it's a special happening or a special situation. They're calling it a phenomenon. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, any other words? Yes. Indistinct. Indistinct. Where's that? Uh, down at the bottom. Lost. Lost line. Some people with synesthesia, on the other hand, retain these indistinct boundaries throughout their lives. So looking at the sentence, any ideas? What do you think that means? Not distinguished. Yeah, yes. so again, just and like not appear. We at not appear. Ab abnormality, indistinct. So not distinct. <laughs> right? So what does that mean? Not appear. Not uh, clear. Yeah, not clear. Right? Unclear. Unclear. Blurred. Oh, okay. Yeah, so indistinct boundaries. So they're saying like this, the blurring of the senses, like what we've said, it's there's no boundary between the senses. The boundaries are indistinct or unclear to them. Okay. okay. Any other words? No? Okay, before we keep going, I want to just go back um, to these last two. Were there any other words in this paragraph that you wanted me to look at really quickly? I forgot to ask you guys. So besides the ones in bold, we all know what stimulation means, right? Yep. Yeah. Stimulation. Mm -hmm. They're okay. Everything's good. Yep, okay. And then this first paragraph, any other words besides the bold ones that you wanted me to go over? Everybody knows what a headache is? Yes. Yeah.
So your head hurts, basically. That's a headache. <laughs> We're okay. Yep. Oh, a, a bouquet yeah. of roses. So that, that's a case where we use a French word in English. There's a lot of French words that we use in English, and we just pronounce it with an English accent. <laughs> so um, a bouquet of roses is just like a handful of roses. Or the bride at a wedding always has a bouquet of flowers. We're okay. All right. Let's look at the next one then. Um, number four. Number four. It is Perkin. Perkin, did you want to read number four for us? Okay. Another finding is that the relationships between the different sensory perceptions are consistent over time. Someone who hears the buzz of a bee as purple will always see it as purple. The sensations are also unique to individuals. One person may see the word table as yellow, another see it as green. So there's that word perception again. I think we we know what perception means. What about the buzz of a bee? <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So they're saying that some people hear a bee buzzing and they see it as purple. So who thinks that these people sound a little crazy? Me. Sounds like someone might be on drugs or something, right? But it's actually really like it's a condition that some people have, and they really hear things and see colors. That's crazy. So, or they associate words with colors. Like the next thing they were saying was a table. The word table. Some people might see the word as yellow, and some might see it as green. So they associate words and colors, or things that they hear with colors. So it's just a blurring of the senses. Um, it can go the other way too. They might see the color purple and then hear the buzz of a bee because that's what they've associated the color with, right? All right. Um, any other vocabulary words here? You okay. You good? Yes. All right. Next one, number five. Usama. Yeah. You've got a long one. <laughs> Also, uh, also, anyone can create links between between the senses and all the ideas of objects to, to the user of metaphor. For example, hatred, debate, bubbly personality, or loud truth. This is not the same as synthesis. Sen senes synesthes. Yeah. So those are people who study synes synesthesia, <laughs> or pe sorry, not synesthesia. study. People who have it are called synesthetes. Senate states experience these relationships. Spun, 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 oh, servant, that's the word. Oh, yes, spontaneously. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt you. That was the word we were trying to think no, 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 no. <laughs> Spontaneously. Okay, keep going. <laughs> okay. S uh, Senate, Senate, Senate states experience these relationships spontaneously without any concern. Conscious uh, thought. One young sun sun state blogger reports how disillusioned disillusioned mm -hmm. she felt when she saw the famous singer. Okay, she felt when his, uh, she saw a famous singer for the first time, and it didn't match up of, uh, to the color she had seen for him when she first uh, heard him sing. Another reports how the sound of paper makes him feel physically sick, so he hates going to restaurants with paper, tape clothes, and napkins. Good, good. Um, spontaneously. That was the word me and Servette were trying to think of when we were talking about acting randomly. <laughs> so, there it is. Um, okay, so there's, there's another interesting reaction. He hears paper crumpling and it makes him physically sick. So there's another um, version of where his hearing and his his feeling and his stomach are blurring together. So it's not only with colors. Um, so the first thing up there was bubbly personality. What's a bubbly personality? Always happy. Yeah. Yes. Bubbly yes. means like you're very happy and bouncy yeah. and very outgoing. Cheerful. Okay. Yes. Yeah, very yes. cheerful. Um, Spontaneously, I pretty much just told you, but what does spontaneously mean? 
<laughs> Acting randomly. Randomly, out, yeah. Out, outgoing. Yeah, outgoing is a bubbly personality, exactly. So, and spontaneously means randomly. So, synesthetes experience these relationships spontaneously without thinking about them. They just happen. They, can't, they don't have any control over it. It's random, spontaneous. Okay. What about disillusioned? What does disillusioned mean? If you're not sure, try to read the sentence in context and break the word down to its root. Disappointed. Yeah. Not, yeah, just not disappointed, no. No? Realistic. Any other ideas? Sorry, Confused. Cecilia, what did you say? Confused. 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 Uh, confused? Yeah, confused is a good one. Feeling disillusioned means you feel like things are out of place. So something happens a different way than you expected, and you feel very strange, out of place, like it just didn't happen the way it was supposed to. You feel disillusioned. So it doesn't necessarily mean she was disappointed or upset with something. It just means that she feels like weird. She feels confused, like something's not quite right disillusioned but okay. uh, so like for example if you were to walk into a fun house one of those like houses with all the weird mirrors in them that you see at circuses and you see yourself like this big and then you're this big and you're like whoa what's going on you feel disillusioned does that make sense yes. so kind of confused yeah, yeah. It, it sounds the opposite to me because you know illusion if, if it comes from illusion it should be opposite of illusion yeah, it's it's not quite though. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just confuse everybody and no. <laughs> but no, because if you're if you're illusion, yeah, no, it doesn't quite work that way. Being disillusioned is just basically being confused or feeling like something's not right. For example, I failed in a quiz. Something happened. It's not. Good. Yeah, but in that case, you would be more disappointed if something bad happened. In this case, it's not necessarily something bad. It's just something different and confusing. So in the sentence, what, what she's saying is, one young synthesis blogger reports how disillusioned she felt when she saw a famous singer for the first time and he didn't match up to the color she had seen him. Sorry, she had seen for him when she first heard him sing. So the first time she heard him sing, he was blue, for example. But then she went and saw him again and he was green. And she was confused. It was weird for her. She felt very disillusioned. Okay, does that make sense? Um, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But no, you're right. It doesn't quite match its root word. It's a little bit different. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, any other uh, vocabulary words? Uh, yes, loud shirt. Sorry, Firkin? Loud shirt. A loud shirt. What does that mean? I don't so, know. So, first of all, what is a metaphor? What's a metaphor? It says objects through use of metaphor. For example, heated debate, bubbly personality, loud shirt. So, what's a metaphor? Cecilia? Something in the place of something else. Mm hmm. So it's using something to, to here I'll get you a definition. To represent something. Yeah, so it's it's using something to represent something else. So it's a figure of speech. Um, something that's not literal. It's just descriptive. A figure of speech. So you're not literally saying that my shirt is loud, like it's yelling at you. It's not literally loud, like yelling, right? If you have a loud shirt, maybe it's like bright orange and yellow and red and has a crazy pattern and you look at it you're like whoa <laughs> that's a loud shirt okay so it's just a it's not literally loud it's just a description or um, it's a figure of speech used to describe something so the same with a bubbly personality when someone has a bubbly personality they're not literally bubbles like you know when you blow bubbles in water like yeah. and then bubbles come out that's not what's happening they don't have bubbles coming off of them right that would be the literal meaning it just means they're very bouncy so a metaphor isn't the literal meaning it's just kind of a figure of speech 
or something that's symbolic for something else. Okay. Um, heated debate. That doesn't literally mean that your debate is on fire, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not on fire, like going to blow up. It just means that it's very tense and people are arguing and it's it's crazy. It's very heated. Okay, so it's just descriptive. Um, so yeah, the shirt is not yelling. <laughs> it's just really bright and obnoxious. Well, I won't use it. <laughs> In any sense. An obnoxious shirt. <laughs> okay. Um, any other vocabulary words there? No, my dear. It's clean. No? We're good? Okay. What's up? Pardon? Number six. Number six? Okay. Number six. It's whose turn is it? Paul. Okay. Thus, while some negative reactions matter out from synesthesia, uh, Professor Simon Baron Cohen believes. It's more useful to think of it uh, as enriched perceptions because synes. Uh, can you pronounce it, please? <laughs> synes. Synesthetes. Oh, synesthetes. Just, just how it looks. Okay, often use their condition as a means to enhance memory or source of insp inspiration. The prominent Russian artist uh, Vasily. Kandinsky, Kandinsky's uh, synesthesia may have tricked, uh, triggered uh, the creation of. His. His famous uh, portrayals, portrayals of yeah. uh, musical composition as abstract paintings. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So perception. I believe we've seen that word a few times. <laughs> um, but what is enriched perception? What does that mean? Improved. Improved, yeah. Improved perception. What about inspiration? What's an ins source of inspiration? Inspiration or inspiration? Inspiration. Inspiration, okay. Mm -hmm. So what is a source of inspiration? Source of inspiration. Like source stuff. of your creation. Creation. Sorry, Frickin, can you say it again? Uh, sometimes you create something different and you say, the nature is, is my source of inspiration. Yeah, so something, something that inspires you. The source of your inspiration is the thing that inspires you. Yeah, your muse. So an artist has a muse. And their muse is their source of inspiration. Servet, did you have something else to say? No, it was kind of similar. Motivation. Similar, yeah. Inspiration from your mother, yeah. Motivation to do something, what inspires you, okay. What about prominent? What does prominent mean? Important. Means important. Yeah. Important, exactly, important. Um, sometimes a prominent artist might be someone famous in their field. So maybe in the field of Russian art, uh, Kandinsky is very famous, very prominent. Okay. Portrayals of music, musical compositions. What's a portrayal? Don't know. Any ideas? Mm -hmm. Cecilia. Picture. Okay. Uh, sorry, portray is a, right. So is good. A so person's picture is an important picture. Right, so portrayal comes a little bit from the same root as portrait. So a portrait is somebody's picture. Portrait. But a portrait, what a portrait is, oops, is a picture of someone. So when, when an artist paints a picture of someone, you call that a portrait. But this portrait is from the artist's perspective of what they see, right? So when you're painting a portrait, it's from the artist's perspective. So the word portrayal comes kind of from the same root. So it's saying, the prominent Russian artist Kandinsky Synthesia may have triggered the creation of his famous portrayals of musical compositions as abstract paintings. So a portrayal is, um, let me find one second. To describe. Or 
Um, that's not really the best definition. The act of depicting or portraying. So, depict, have you heard the word depict? So, portray, depict, represent. So, it's like his representation of a musical composition as abstract paintings. So, what they're saying is he hears music, he sees colors, because he has the synesthesia, <laughs> and then he paints them. So he's painting his portrayal, his perception, or his representation of the music. Does that make sense? Yes. So his portrayal is like his depiction or his representation of something. Okay? Um, any other vocab words just here to go over? Or are we okay? Uh, uh, literally, they are uh, drawing pictures. Or uh, in another way, they are uh, no, he's, representing. In this case, he's literally painting, but yeah. he's portraying his. He's not literally. <laughs> he's not literally. He is literally drawing the music because when he listens to the music, okay, this is I what see. he sees, right? I see. Okay. Yeah. So li in this case, it is literal, but just because of the synesthesia, it makes it kind of unique. But if I were to um, go walk down to the Eiffel Tower and think about it and then come home and paint it, that's my portrayal of the Eiffel Tower. So this is how I portray it, how I want to represent it. Maybe I'm going to make it pink because that's how I want to paint my picture, right? So it's your own portrayal. It's not necessarily literally right, okay? Uh, I, mean, I mean to portray something. Mm -hmm. To draw something, or can we portray something in, in other ways? Yeah, no, you can portray it in other ways. I could write, and I could portray something through writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can portray it in other ways. Um, it's It means the same thing as depict or represent. So you can represent things in paint. Yeah. You can represent things on paper. There's lots of, in music, right? There's yeah. lots of different ways to portray or represent things. But um, it comes it comes from the same kind of root as portrait, right? Mm -hmm. So that's they're they're not the same word by any stretch, but they come from the same root, the same idea. Yes, yeah, Cecilia. Cecilia. Does it say if the picture on the text is Kandinsky or Miros? Can you say Can you say that again? Sorry, if it says if the picture on the text is Kandinsky of me or Miros. Kandinsky. Sorry, I'm not sure I understand your question. There is a picture on oh, top the picture of the text. Up at the top. It, um, if, I if don't know, says, but probably. It looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it looks to me. It looks as a Spanish painter, Miró. Oh, is do it? Know, do you know Miró? No, I don't. M I R O Miró. It could be. They didn't actually label it, so I don't know. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry, but as it just they just picked uh, Kandinsky. That's why I'm asking, but it's out of uh, out of no, topic. Sorry, sir. No, it's fine. Um, they don't actually label it, so I don't know. It could be, but yeah, that's the painting looks like what somebody see or hears and sees when they listen to music, right? All of these crazy okay. lines. We can imagine yeah. that it's in color. Maybe some yeah. of that was green, yellow. We don't know, but okay. that's their portrayal of the music that they heard, right? Mm -hmm. so that's Thank their you, depiction. Samantha. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know who it is. Maybe it's Moreau. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. We have one more paragraph. So let's go to Mr. Servet. Oh, my turn. <laughs> okay. Let me just share it. Here we go. Oh, medical? Yep. Uh, medical science has known about synesthesia for several centuries, but this revival of interest has increased our understanding. We now know that this is more frequent among women and left-handers, and that it appears to run in families. However, 
estimates of the number of people with synesthesia still vary widely from 1 to 200. From 1 from, in 200? From 1 in 200 to 1 in 2000. Yeah. This, may be, this may be because many people who have the condition may not re realize that it has a name. Perfect. So, revival. What is the revival of interest in something? What does that mean? Cecilia, I think you're on to something with your finger movements. <laughs> what does it mean, revival? <laughs> yes, coming again. Coming yeah, again. returning. Good, the return. The revival of interest. They're saying people have known about synesthesia for centuries, but interest is just coming back recently. So a revival of interest, a resurgence. Okay. It's another word if you haven't heard it. Resurgence. It means about the same thing. Something surges back or comes back. Okay. Um, what about frequent? It happens a lot of times. Yeah. Regularly, right? Often. Frequently. And then, oh, that's it. So were there any other vocabulary words in this last bit? Left-handers. <laughs> people who are left-handed. <laughs> We're good? Okay. Let me just zoom out. There are some comprehension questions and things, but we don't quite have time. So, just have to make this bigger. So we're just going to do a quick review. We won't get through all the words because we only have about four minutes left, but this is just showing that these words have multiple meanings. Um, and the meaning in the text isn't the only meaning for these words. There's multiple meanings. So what we're going to do is, um, if you have to look back at the text, we can. But let's try to do it just from memory of what we just read, OK? So ink, when it's used in the text, is the meaning A or B? So just read it to yourself, and then think about when we saw the word ink, what was the meaning? A. A. Right. So A, it's colored liquid. It's not ink in an octopus. <laughs> okay. So there's different types of ink. Um, what about number two, flavor? B. Yeah, exactly. The particular taste. What about three, rose? Pink. B. A. Now, were they talking about the color or the flower? Let's go back. Flower. A bouquet of roses. Now read the sentence. Are they talking about the color pink? Or sorry, the, what's the word we're looking at? Rose, right? Are they talking about the color rose or the rose itself? Rose. Yeah, the rose itself, right? So a flower that often has a pleasant smell. But you can also use the word rose to describe the color. A rosy pink, you could say. Or the color rose is just like the color pink. Okay, number four, perception. B. 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 Good. Number five, orchestra. A. A. Mm -hmm. Six, bolt. B. 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 Yeah. Refined, number seven. B. Uh, B. A. Now, was it talking about being polite and well-educated, or was it talking about something that's improved to make it better? B. 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 Refined senses, right? Improved senses. The other meaning for refined is like when somebody has very, very good table manners and they always sit very properly. They could eat, dine with the queen. <laughs> okay, so that's the other meaning for refined. Um, number eight, buzz. A. 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 Yeah, A. Nine, B. A. A. Good. Ten, personality. B. 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 Good. And eleven, inspiration. <laughs> Someone's listening to opera or something. A. A. Good. Good. Perfect. Okay.
Does anybody have any questions about any of those words? That was so funny, <laughs> Servet, how that word came up later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's such a I hadn't so read it all the way through yet, so that's, that was funny. But you saw, I knew there was a word. I was like, what is it? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions before we finish up? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I'm teaching again tomorrow, I think. No, uh, Thursday. <laughs> Sorry. At oh, the same no. time. Yeah. And also, if you're interested, I'll be posting more information on the Facebook group. But um, the fairy tales class that I mentioned before is going to be starting on January 20, 22nd, if anyone's interested in that. I'll post some more information shortly. Okay. So I hope you guys have a good day. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. I'm sorry I was so in a hurry, but I had missed this class. And oh, I, okay. I was highly interested in joining in. I so, was so 